There are several reasons why it's important to use an electrical box that has enough room to contain wires, fittings, and devices. There are heat concerns. This dimmer switch creates heat, and to prevent potential meltdowns, it needs some air space. Lack of space makes it difficult for installation, and wires can get damaged and become a potential hazard. You'll also need to comply with code. The example in this picture is a code violation. The focus of this video is to use the National Electric Code to help a non-electrician working on a residential electric system in the United States determine the correct size junction or electric box needed for a project. Identify the version of the National Electric Code called NEC for short, or also called NFPA 70, adopted by your state or municipality. The code is updated every three years, and it can be accessed for free at the National Fire Protection Association's webpage. I'll be using the 2014 edition. From 2008 to 2017, there have not been any major changes in Article 314.16, that would affect adding a new box or adding additional wiring to an existing box in a residential setting. I do encourage that you review section 314.16 of the edition that applies to you after watching this video. If you are not in the electrical trade, the code's terminology can be confusing. I'll take a moment to go over some basic things that will help you understand the topic that we'll be talking about. This is a cable. The sheathing contains multiple conductors or wires. The bare wire is a ground wire. Ground wires can also have a green coating on them. An outlet device or junction box is a metal box or a plastic box. Table 314.16a is a list of standard metal boxes that lists the volumes of those boxes and the maximum number of conductors permitted. Standard metal boxes typically do not have their volume marked on the box. Plastic boxes and things that can add volume to a box, such as extension rings, plaster rings, or domed covers, are supposed to have their volume stamped or marked on the item. Don't do your own math for the volume of the box. Table 314.16a says this 4 by 4 by 1 and a half inch box has 21 cubic inches of volume. If you multiply 4 times 4 times 1.5 inches, it equals 24 cubic inches. This is an example of an internal clamp. It's supplied with the box and it's located inside of the box. These are examples of external clamps. They reside outside of the box. These are support fittings for a light fixture. There are also different shaped fittings for a light fixture that are called hickeys. A receptacle or switch are examples of devices or equipment. The green ground wire on this switch is called an equipment grounding conductor. To start the process of figuring out the minimum size box needed to contain devices, clamps, support fittings, and conductors, let's take a look at the overfill box that I showed earlier in the video. There are five basic rules stated in box fill calculations, section 314.16 Bravo. I'll apply the rules. To the overfilled box to determine the correct box size. All conductors that enter a box through a conduit or cable and are terminated on a device or splice shall be counted once for each conductor. Don't count the bare ground wire and you don't count pigtails. There's two number 14 conductors entering the box through one cable and there's three number 14 conductors entering the box from a second cable. There's an additional condition on the conductor fill 
and it says that if the conductors pass through the box, in other words, no splice or no termination on the device, you count each conductor as one. There are no conductors passing through this box, so we add nothing to the count. Table 314.16 Bravo tells us how much volume to add for each conductor count. Each count for a 14 gauge wire equals 2 cubic inches of space used up inside the box. 5 number 14 conductors times 2 cubic inches each equals 10 cubic inches. The next rule, clamp fill. Internal clamps, no matter how many are in the box, count as one fill count. Use the largest size conductor that enters the box for the fill volume. Add no clamp fill volume if an external clamp is used. There's two internal clamps, but of course they'll only count as one, and the largest conductor to enter the box is a number 14. Add one to the box fill count for the internal clamps using two cubic inches for the fill volume because the largest conductor that enters the box is a number 14. Support fitting fill. Where one or more studs or hickeys are in a box, add one volume count for each type of fitting. Use volume amount for the largest conductor in the box. This pertains to an older style light fixture, which it's unlikely that you'll see these. And since we're not dealing with any kind of light fixture in our example, we can skip this rule. Device or equipment fill. For each light switch or receptacle, add two volume caps. Use the largest size conductor attached to the device for the fill volume. If the device is larger than two inches wide, use four volume counts for the device. The receptacle or light switch will take up room, so we have to account for that volume. The example has one light switch. The largest conductor that is connected to it is a number 14. I'll add two number 14 volume fills to the box fill count. There's one more rule, equipment grounding conductor fill. Add one volume count for all the ground conductors in the box. Use the largest size conductor in the box for the volume size. In the example, there are ground conductors coming into the box on each cable. We would count that as one count and a number 14 fill volume. If the switch had an equipment ground conductor and say all the ground wires in this box were pigtailed and then uh, terminated onto the box, you would still count just one volume count for all those ground wires. I'll add one more volume count to the box fill count and now we know that everything contained in the box, the conductors, the clamps, the device, account for a total of 18 cubic inches. Back on table 314.16 alpha I can look up the existing size box, which is a 3 by 2 by 2 and a quarter, and I see that its capacity is 10.5 cubic inches. To find the next minimum size box that we can use for the devices, wiring, and clamps contained in the box, we find that it's the three by two by three and a half inch box, which has exactly 18 cubic inches of volume. If there is a tile ring, extension ring, or there's a domed cover mounted on the box, then add the volume that is marked or stamped on those items to the box volume for its total capacity. 
so that's how you go about figuring out how many wires and clamps and devices you can fit into a box. I hope you found this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name Know How Now to find other videos. And thanks for watching.